Nostrovia. I think I scared myself. <laughs> Nostrovia. I had to say that because I have to get in the Russian mood because today we're going to make a Russian dish. Well, actually, stroganoff is not really a Russian dish. It originated in Russia, but people believe it was the French chefs in the stroganoff Russian house that created this dish. And since then, it's spread all over the world. It started out in Russia. I think it was a, it was a mustard-based dish and then... The French turned it into something that was a roux-based dish. It made its way into China, and it made its way through Asia. And in the 1950s, it made its way all over the United States with the Chinese and Russian and other immigrants that came into the country. Very interesting history. The American version usually has mushrooms. It usually has sour cream in it. The Russian version has a scoop of sour cream on top of it. And uh, it's a very interesting dish. Now, you can make it keto because it has no sugar and it has no carbs in it. And if you serve it over cauliflower rice, it's a complete, perfect keto dish. And if you serve it over noodles, well, then it's not keto, but it's still delicious. So I'm going to show you how to make a homemade hamburger stroganoff American style. Start off with your hamburger. You want to season it up so that when you cook this, it's going to wind up being nice and flavorful. So we like to use the grass-fed. That's usually what you wind up using on keto, but that's more expensive, but it's healthier for you, so definitely use that if you can. I'm going to pour into that roughly three to four tablespoons of dehydrated onion, and then I'm gonna put in about two teaspoons of granulated garlic. And that's what you need to season up your meat. Okay. Now you've got the beef all seasoned. You can leave it in there or in the fridge for an hour or two to, to help it get seasoned. And then you go ahead and you start cooking the rest of your dish. Okay, you start cooking. You take about a tablespoon of butter and you put it into a pan. Okay, now you have your butter melted. You want to throw in a half of an onion, finely chopped. And you want to saute it until it's just translucent. So that'll go about two to five minutes, somewhere during that thing. You don't want to brown it, but you want it to be soft and see-through. Okay, the next thing you do, you get a package of mushrooms. These are all sliced, it makes it easy. You don't need a whole bunch of mushrooms, but the American version has some mushrooms in it that contributes to the flavor. My niece loves mushrooms. And so whenever I make this, I always put more than I normally would because I know she loves it. You want to put the mushrooms in with the onions and saute them up. Until the mushrooms are soft. So now the mushrooms are a little bit soft. I'm going to take them off. I'm going to put everything here in a bowl, and then we're going to throw the beef in the pan and start to cook that up. Okay, you break the beef up into chunks, and you just brown it in the pan. Okay, now your hamburger meat is brown. You throw the vegetables back in. and add a quart of chicken stock. This stock makes your sauce. You don't want to skimp on it because the sauce is what you really love in this dish. Now bring it to a boil, and while you're waiting for it to boil, go ahead and add your spices. Add one large or two small bay leaves. We have a bay leaf tree, so we've got small ones. The, the ones that you get at the store are usually bigger. So you just do one of those. Add in about a teaspoon of paprika. And about a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. 
Now this is optional. If you don't like things spicy, you don't need to add this, but I usually add some spice, maybe about a teaspoon to a half teaspoon of spicy peppers. And I do that because these peppers are really spicy. My wife loves things spicy, so I tend to make my food spicier than I would if somebody else were eating it. Stir it in, bring everything to a boil. Also, we want to add in a clove of garlic for the flavor. Then add some salt and some pepper to taste. If you guys haven't figured out by now, I usually like a lot of pepper in my dishes. So two big pinches of pepper, about a half teaspoon of salt. That's what I like. Now, as far as the pepper goes, you can use your own pepper grinder. Um, sometimes I do. The, the taste is a little fresher. It's a little stronger when you use a grinder, but it is a lot of work to grind up two tablespoons of pepper into something. So it's a lot easier to use the pre-ground stuff when you're using a lot of pepper. Okay, now just cook this down until it's started to bubble and boil, and then it's thick, and then I'll show you what to do next. All right, so now you have it boiling. You want to let it cook down maybe about five to 10 minutes like this because you want to reduce some of the liquid at this point and intensify the flavor. Also, you're, you're getting all the flavors developed into the juice. Okay, this has been cooking for about 10 minutes or so right now. It's reduced by about a quarter. Now you want to add in about a teaspoon of soy sauce. The reason to add the soy sauce, it gives it an umami flavor. You want to make sure not to have salted it too much when you first salted it because this is salty. But putting in the teaspoon of soy sauce really does change the flavor of this dish and it makes it quite good. Stir the soy sauce in and then take about a half teaspoon of xanthan gum. And this is a trick you use on keto. This will thicken the sauce up a little bit. Now a big part of the flavor, you're gonna add in about three quarters of a cup of dry sherry. This adds a lot to the flavor and it makes it very tasty. Now with the sherry in it, you wanna cook it for another 10 minutes or so. Okay, this has actually been only about five minutes, but it thickened up nice. You wanna take out the bay leaves because you don't wanna eat these. They add a big flavor to your dish. You'd miss them if they were out of there, but definitely you don't wanna be crunching on them. Take them out. Now, I'm gonna turn the dish off and you add in a half a cup of sour cream. This is one of the things that makes the American version different from the other versions, is that you do add the sour cream in. Stir it in. The Russian version uses mustard. The Asian versions use tomatoes. But the American version uses sour cream. All right, that's pretty well done. You can put this over cauliflower rice and that makes a great dish. Of course, you want to taste it to make sure that it tastes right. Perfect. 
Now, if you want, if you really want to make it a little more mushroom, you can maybe put a tablespoon of Dijon mustard in there. I don't like it with the mustard. I like it fine just like this. I think this is a great dish and uh, we're going to have it over cauliflower rice and let you know what it's like. <music> Enough and over a little cauliflower rice, very happy keto meal. And it's a little bit of a splurge, but it's completely keto, so it's good. Mm. The beef is chewy, the mushrooms have some really nice, meaty texture. It's got that umami flavor that the soy sauce added, it's got the tang of the sour cream a little bit of a, an interesting flavor that the sherry adds to it. It's really a nice overall meal. You make this, your family will love it, you'll love it. Serve it to them over the noodles if they're not on keto and they'll like it too, or over regular rice. But it's great over cauliflower rice. Maybe you can serve it to them that way. Nobody will complain.